So, uh, what should we do for the intro on this one? Well, I was thinking maybe something about spiders, since, well, you know. Yeah, I like it. Maybe a, maybe a beat pun? Nice. Now, what do you think about... Oh, what, what, it looks like they're here early. What? But we haven't even come up with an elaborate intro yet. I know, I know. Just get on with it. <laughs> hey, uh, welcome to our monthly devlog. Uh, we've got lots of cool changes, so I guess I'll just get going. For those of you who are new here, my brother Mike and I are working on a game called Clean Up on Isle Goblin, which is about a little goblin trying to get rid of the annoying humans on their island. It'll be very similar to Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon in terms of general flow. Your job is to maintain your little town and travel around accomplishing tasks. Combat is turn-based, kind of like Crypt of the Necrodancer. So normally I like to put my favorite change at the very end of the video, but this time I'm just going to say it because I'm so hyped about it. You saw in my previous video that I added dynamic shadows using Unity's shadow system, but the more I messed with it, the more I saw how limiting it was. I mean, it was just so laggy, like embarrassingly so. So I started to ponder other options. I could A, live with it, B, make something myself, or C, use an asset from someone smarter than me to do the grunt work. I ended up choosing C to save time. Luckily, I tried this in the past, and way back then, in 2019 maybe, I got this smart lighting 2D asset. Back then it was pretty bare, but after looking at it now, it looked perfect for what I needed. So I reinstalled it, link is in the description. I had to change up some of the shader code to make it work for me, but here you can see the end result. As the sun comes up, all of the shadows get muted and you can see the daylight shadows from all the objects. Then when the sun goes down, we're relying only on the lights in the scene. And notice how the shadows show on the actual trees as well, due to the normal maps I added on. It almost looks like the light is actually moving around them, even though they're just a flat 2D object. I can also easily set a tint color here as well, depending on what time it is. If it's early morning, it can be an orangey color to make it look more like a sunrise. Overall, I'm very happy with the result. It makes it sort of 3D and definitely pops a lot more. I think this is a solid step towards making the game stand out. If I jump to any random time, I'm really content with how it looks. I think once we add in some other atmospheric effects, it'll be really immersive. Now, I'll admit it, that change was a little flashy and unnecessary for gameplay. I should really be focusing on getting the core systems down before I do excessive junk like that, but honestly I was just really excited to see it. I did end up making some other big changes though that helped turn our little goblin buddy into a functional member of society. First off, I added farming. This is very crucial to the game, since I want the player to be able to customize their town how they like, and of course manage their own little farm. I first made a hoe item where, when you equip it, you can whack the floor and clear away the grass. If you whack again, it'll till the dirt. I then added little seed components that place the seeds in the ground. The seeds assign themselves to the farming manager script, which keeps track of them if we leave the area. When we come back, it makes sure they're still there and tells the seeds to refresh. Here we can see that if I plant the seeds, leave for a day, and come back, they grow. If I leave for another day, they grow even more. And on the last day, you can walk into them and pick the plant. A delicious beat. I of course want to add little dirt splash effects to make this look less dull, but it's a solid start. I also wanted to make some recurring plants, where you can pick them repeatedly once they're planted. The beat plant is not one where I would actually do this, but I don't have any other plants yet and I wanted to get the code working. You can see when the plant is said to be reharvestable, I can pluck it once and it doesn't disappear. The next day, or however long I set it to be, it'll reset. I made it so I can customize how many days it takes per stage of plant growth, so I can implement any number of plants in a matter of hours. All I really have to do is make the art. I'm trying to avoid putting in tons of content now since I still have a few background systems to do. Once I get most of the framework done, it'll be very quick for me to put in new plants, recipes, characters, monsters, etc. Speaking of monsters, I decided to implement livestock. I wanted the player to be able to raise different animals and collect their produce so they could use it to craft stuff. The obvious first question is, what kind of animals would a goblin raise? Cows? Sheep? I didn't like the basic options and for now made a cute little spider that'll drop spider silk. Kind of the goblin equivalent of wool. The character can use the spider silk to make clothes or whatever later on. Plus, spiders get such a bad rep because they look creepy, but they really help out a lot with pests and such. With our goblins also getting profiled as evil by the humans that are attacking, I think giving them little spider pets is a solid choice. The first step of putting them in was drawing them. I drew up male, female, and baby spiders. Apparently, female spiders are usually larger and more colorful according to the internet, so I tried to reflect that here. Once I finished animating them, I put them into the game. The player just needs to first place down this cool spider building, upon entering they can now place spider eggs, and upon placing the cute little baby spider appears and the player can name it. The baby will only grow if it receives love pets and gets some food in its trough. I'll probably make a bug based food at some point, the mushrooms are just temporary. If the player comes back later on after a few days, the spider becomes fully grown and will eat the food that's left out. The system that all does this is somewhat complicated. The spider, upon getting spawned in, registers itself with the Livestock Manager script. 
This script keeps track of all the livestock, and if you leave and come back, it spawns them into the scene if you walk into a room that's supposed to have a critter. It also sees if they should have eaten, and if so, removes the food that you placed in the trough. Now that we've got farming and ranching, our little goblin is well on their way to becoming a functioning member of society. I ended up making one last change before the month end, and well, I'll show you my old art for the Steam page. Not bad, but I made it in a rush. It didn't convey the vibe of the game well enough, and I wasn't super content with it. I ended up changing this to a newer drawing, and I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. I wanted to show the feeling of exploration that I'm aiming for in the end product. I want the players to feel a sense of community and openness in the world around them, like the island is theirs to explore. As I continue with development and finalize more NPCs and creatures, I'll make sure to put them in here, kind of like a mural that'll grow over time. For now, I've got it up on my Steam page, so feel free to go check it out. If you want to wishlist the game, that would be super helpful, and I'd love you eternally forever and ever. And of course, liking the video helps YouTube know to show my stuff to other people, so feel free to drop one of those likes or hit the subscribe button. Uh, is, is that all the plugs? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. We- Wait a second, there's also the Discord! Oh yeah, what was I thinking? Yeah, head on over to the uh, Discord server to hang out and talk about goblins. I often ask for feedback in the feedback channel and like to hang out and chat and answer questions. But hey, thanks uh, thanks for coming by. Every view is really encouraging and I'm very excited to be making this game. I really think we can turn it into something awesome and uh, I wanted to thank everyone for their support so far. See you next time.